Hello, everyone. We continue to meet nominees shortlisted for the Global Energy Prize this year. And today we are going to talk to Professor Jin Jijun, President of Institute of Energy, Peking University. Professor, you were nominated for the prize for fundamental research and exploration of oil and gas. The application of mechanism of uh, the accumulation of hydrocarbons in the sequence of deep sea carbonates you discovered led to the successful exploration of oil and gas in China in recent years. And all thanks to your research. Tell us more about it. Okay. After receiving my PhD in Russia in 1962, uh, 19, uh, uh, 1992, I worked in Tarun Basin once I came back to China and later worked in Sichuan Basin. I have been conducting research to the revolve the main controlling factor and the mechanism of deep seated carbonate reservoir formations. Just as you know, the marine carbonate basin in China are superimposed basin that have experienced multiple stage of evolution with multiple set of source rock, multiple generations, multiple accumulations, and later adjustment. The preservation condition are very important. The oil layer is deeply burned and the oil and gas distribution are completed. After years of research, we have made some breakthroughs, including first, the realization that high quality reservoir also exists at a depth of 7,000 to 8,000 meters, which previous scholars thought that it was difficult to have high quality reservoirs at a depth of more than 5,000 meters. We believe that large scale of oil and gas field can still be found beyond the depth of the uh, 5,000 meters. The second, the oil and gas in the deep carbon rocks are often very close to the source rock, which is highly heterogeneous and difficult to migrate over long distance. The third, the fault developed zone and the fracture developed zone are often easy to form large scale carbonate reservoirs. The fourth, the preservation conditions for deep natural gas reservoirs especially those formed at the early stage are also critical. This is due to the fact that the natural gas can be lost through diffusion. Five, we put forward a new understanding of source capital coupling with control the distribution of hydrocarbons while slope hang zone control the accumulation of hydrocarbons. Based on these new findings from 1996 to 20,000, I predicted that there should be large scale natural gas and oil in the deep layers of central Tarun Basin. In recent years, we have discovered a giant oil and gas accumulation zone in this area. The output of a single well can reach more than 1,500 barrels at the whole scale of resources had been estimated to be around 22.5 to 37.5 billion barrels. There are also many new discoveries in Sichuan Basin also. Uh, I, I will not give in the detail here. In 2016, the achievements of the carbonate reservoirs won the second, prize, uh, second class prize of the National Technology Innovation Award. I was the main contributor. Anyway, That's let all. me please uh, stop on the Sichuan Basin. Uh, yeah. What was the obstacles and the difficulties uh, there to open this first uh, commercial uh, shale gas field, the filling? Yeah. Regarding the discovery of fulling shell gas field, I was one of the earliest scientists in China who conducted fundamental research and the preliminary preparations. In 2002, I began to pay attention to the progress of the shell gas revolution in the United States. 
My students and I published several papers in 2003 and 2004 and introduced U.S. shale gas related theories and technologies into China. In 2006, I supervised my research team to carry out the national shale gas evolution and target zone selection work. In the end, we believe that the vast southern region, including the flame gas field, is an important area for shale gas exploration. Combined with the specific situation of China, we have discovered that shale gas field also need good preservation conditions. We found that the deep salt layer in the Sichuan Basin is a very good cap rock which is an important controlling factor for the gas field in the south. My colleagues from Sinopex Exploration Branch determined the location of the first discovery well in the commercial gas field in Fuling. As a deputy chief geologist of Sinopex, I participate in the evaluation and discussion of well placement. China is the third country of the United States and Canada to achieve commercial shale gas discoveries. In 2014, at the fifth International Shale Gas Conference, which was held by Dallas in the United States, Sinopec was awarded the International Pioneer Award. On behalf of Sinopec, I accepted the trophy. In 2017, the filling shale gas field exploration and development achievement won the first class prize of National Science and Technology Progress Collective. My team and I were one of the main contributors. Thank you very much. If I'm not mistaken, you graduated from the Gupkin Russian State University of Oil and Gas, yeah. and yeah. you have contributed a lot to the Russian-Chinese relations. So do you still cooperate with Russia that much? Thank you for your so kind words. My team has a long history of cooperation with Russia, which spans as far back as the early 90s. I completed my PhD dissertation on the tuning oil field under the guidance of the Dr. Spiemann. It was during that time uh, uh, that I proposed uh, that China and Russia build the first oil pipeline, which has played an important role in the energy cooperation between these two countries. Later, while working at the China University of Petroleum, I worked with the SPIMAS team of the research center for regional utilization and underground resources of Handemasisk administrative autonomous region. The con academician controversy team of the Novosibirsk Institute of Geology and Geophysics, Russia Academy of Science, and the professors of the Department of Geology, Hopkins University, which is also my alma mater. After I started working at Sinapec, my team worked with Rosneft. We jointly developed the UDA oil field, which is still an oil field with very good profit. At the Sinapec Petroleum Exploration and Production Research Institute, we just completed the National Science Foundation of China and the Russia Foundation for Basic Research joined the project with Kazan University. We together hosted several academic conferences between 2011 and 20, uh, 2020. I'm currently working at Peking University and I am preparing a continue to cooperate with Kazan University in the shale oil research. What, what other eco-friendly technologies can be implemented, you know, to protect the nature of uh, marine and or ocean resources? As, as you know, I am a geologist, not an engineer, but I will try to answer the environmental issue of offshore oil and gas development as far as I know. As for offshore environmental protection technology, 
we have also made very good developments over the years. The first is to prevent offshore oil and gas leakage. This is done through system engineering, which mainly depends on the reliability of equipment and strict management procedures and standards to ensure that oil and gas do not leak and there must be no environmental pollution during offshore oil and gas production. The second one is to carry out some measurements, including the deposit of offshore drilling waste, the further rejection of mud and rock cuttings after treatment, no waste removal, etc. The third one is consider the environmental friendliness. For example, the natural gas pipeline lying on the seabed could consider the activities of fish and try to avoid a affecting the growth of the environment of marine life. Thank you very much for this uh, interview and uh, have a nice day. Thank you.